In this video, you're going to learn one classic blues lick that illustrates a concept that's going to totally boost your blues improvisation. Hi, I'm Donna from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site to boost your performance and improvisation skills up to the next level. One of my all-time favorite songs is Honky Tonk, but not the original version. It's the Jimmy Smith version on the Primetime CD. Why do I like that version so much? Because there's five choruses of saxophone solos that are just so good, it's ridiculous. There's so much great vocabulary there that's good for blues, that's good for jazz, rock, pop, you name it. And I'm going to be teaching you one of the licks from there. Uh, from Actually, it's the fourth chorus. It's Ricky Woodard's solo, and it's around the beginning. Uh, it's within the first four bars. I'm going to teach you that little mini lick, and that lick is going to illustrate one concept that can really open up your blues playing. Now, if you're the type of player that you know, you're just using blues scales and pentatonic scales when you're soloing over blues, this video is going to be really important for you because this concept is going to just open up a whole new world, world for you. All right, this is an interactive video, so grab your horn, all right, and I want to teach you that, uh, that lick. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is do the concert F blues scale, and if you're on a tenor trumpet, clarinet, it's going to be your G blue scale. If you're on an alto sax, it's going to be your D blue scale. So just going to play this um, just really quickly up and down. Make sure you have it in your fingers. <laughs> Hopefully you don't have this memorized by fingerings. Hopefully you know what notes you're playing. Okay, this is going to be important. Okay, so really get those sounds in your ears, particularly the sound of the, uh, the root note. So it would be the G for the tenor or the D for the alto. Okay, so this is the lick we're going to learn today. And I'm going to do it without the backing music just for a second, just so you can hear it. I'm going to guide you th quickly through one of my main systems that I use to help to learn how to transcribe, how to uh, learn solos, all that type of thing. So let's hear that lick first. Okay. So now what I'd like to do, I'm going to ask you a whole bunch of questions. Okay, I'm going to start one each though. And I'm going to play that lick again. I'm going to play it three times. I want you to tell me how many different pitches you hear in that lick. Okay, so let me play this three times. How many different pitches did you hear? Okay, don't count every note that I played. How many different pitches did you hear? If you said three, you were correct. Okay, now you remember before when I had you play your blue scale and I said pay attention to what the root note sounded like, which is going to be this. Either octave is fine. Now, this question I'm going to ask you is this. First of all, can you hear that root note in your head right now? If not, play it on your instrument and then really try to hear it in your head and then come back to me. Now, once you have this in your head, I'm going to play that lick again and I want you to really listen and see if you hear that root note, that reference note in this lick. <laughs> Could you hear that reference note in the lick? If you said yes, you're correct. If you said no, that's okay. You're learning something right now. You're learning that um, you need to do a little bit more work in this area of 
hearing and retaining that resting tone, okay, that reference point. And really simple, the best way to practice it is to just play the note, hear it in your head, and then wait a few seconds, and then sing it and see if you've got it right. Okay, so yes, the lick does have the reference tone in there. Okay, so for me it's a G. Okay, now you said there's three different pitches. All right, so let's figure out what they are. Let's hear that reference tone, bum, or bum. And let's think about, let's see, the first note. By the way, what am I doing right now? I'm singing it. I'm not, I know the lick already. I'm going to pretend like I kind of don't know it. But I'm singing it. All right, now if I'm not able to sing the lick, I've got to go back to hearing the lick listening to that primetime CD, um, you know, the fourth course where this lick is, hear it a lot. And here's a pro tip for you, don't sing along. If you sing along, you're just reacting. It doesn't mean that you have the lick up here, okay? And by the way, you don't have the lick up here until you can reproduce it by singing it. Okay. ba do ba bu da ba bu da bu da without the crack, ba bu da bu ba Okay, now I'm going to slow it down. I want to find that first note. And at the same time, I'm hearing the reference pitch of bum. So I want to say to myself, here's my question. Is the first note the reference pitch? Is it lower or higher? Bum. Reference pitch. Okay. Bum. Ba bu da bu da. Bum. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. If you said it was lower, you're correct. Okay, so now, how much lower? A lot? A little bit? Keep singing. Bum. Reference tone. Bum. 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 Probably not that far away, right? Okay, so now, here's the power of singing, okay? And not reacting, but singing. Okay. Boop ba da boop da Bum. I want to find that note on the horn. Well, if I know the resting tone is here, and I want to find the first note, I know it's going to be a little bit lower, so let's see. Let's try the notes from the blues scale. Bum. Mm -mm. Bum. Okay, so I just played an F, but that was too high. So now I'd say to myself, okay, it was too high. Was it too high by a little, by a lot? Bum. Okay, just a little bit. All right. Hmm. Well, then the next note in the blue scale is my D. Bum. That's not it either. Okay. Bum, bum. The D is a little bit lower. So, wait a minute. This note is not in the blue scale. Bum. It's my E. It's not in the blue scale. Oh, okay. This is going to lead to this concept. So the blue scale is an awesome tool to use, but if you find yourself getting bored with your solos, getting stuck, um, not knowing what else to play, you can add the six, the sixth degree. Okay, so think of your scale in terms of numbers. Each uh, note in the scale is a number, okay? So E is the six, right? I'm in the key of G for me. So I added the six. Add in the six, that one magic note opens up a whole world of possibilities. Okay, so let me finish with this lick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the lick starts off with the six, ba do ba bu da. Got one more note to figure out, right? Because you said there were three different notes. All right. Ba bu da bu da, ba bu da. That note, right in my breaking point. <laughs> ba bu da. Okay, so can you sing the reference note, the reference pitch? Try to do that now. Bum. Okay. Boo -boo -da. Is that note higher or lower than the reference pitch? And if you said it was higher, you're correct. Lot, a little bit higher, what do you think? Boo -ba -bum. Bum -bum. Mm -hmm. a, little, a little amount, not too much. All right, so now I gotta find it. Okay, so, well, let me use my blue scale, right? My G, G blue scale. G is the reference tone, so let me go with the next pitch, which is B flat. Boom, 
that's it. Ah, okay, so now my three notes are bum, bum, bum. The B flat is the flat three, right? G is the one, B flat's the flat three, E is the six. So this concept of adding the six is really important because a lot of times there's licks that use the one, the flat three, and the six. Do you see where I'm going with this? All right, now, we don't have the lick yet. No, you don't. Because you need to know not only what the rhythms are, you gotta get the feel for it, you gotta get the groove, and you have to know where that lick falls within the measure. Okay, so for this tune, it's a blue shuffle, and shuffles usually are felt with subdivisions of threes. I call it triple meter. So for every big beat, do dotty, 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 do dotty. Those are syllables, rhythm syllables that I use from music learning theory. So we're feeling threes. Okay, so I'm gonna set up my metronome at 105 beats uh, per minute, four, four time. The first beat's gonna be a little louder. I'm using tonal energy tuner metronome. I'm gonna sing this through. I know the lick already. So my question to you is, where in the measure does it fall? Does it fall on the first beat, second, third, or fourth? Does it fall right on the beat or is it on an upbeat? Okay, so here's the metronome. ba ba da ba da ba ba da ba da What do you think? Where is it in the measure? Okay, let me know in the comments below. All right, if you said that it was towards the beginning, you're exactly right. But here's my question to you. Did it fall right on the downbeat or was it on an upbeat? Yes, it was on an upbeat. Okay, so now the upbeat of which beat? One, two, three, or four? If you said the upbeat of one, you're correct. Now you have context for it. Here's my last question. Shape. What's the shape of this? Does it just go up? Does it stay in one note? Well, we know it doesn't. There's three notes, so scratch that. Does it just go down or does it do a combination of that? Okay, so let me sing it again and then think about the shape. What do you think? If you said like all the above, yes. Okay, and one question I probably should have asked earlier, but we know about the reference note. Well, one way to find this also, if, you're, if you've got like a whole bunch of notes in there, um, and you have a held out note, try to figure that out, that note out first. So, this lick ends on the reference note, the one. Okay, so it's a little, little tip for you as well. Okay, so we know the shape is all the above. I'm tracing it, right? No hand signs or anything, just I'm based on uh, what I'm hearing in my head. Okay, I'm able to sing it. And now, since I have it up here, I could slow it down and figure it out on the horn, right? So here's what it's gonna sound like. And I'm gonna be using my singing to find it. Okay, so I know what's lowest, what's in the middle, what's highest. Okay, so. Now, I kind of rush through that. I can do this slower. And not use a metronome just to start with. But I still want to feel the beats. And once you've got it slow, then then you could pick up the speed for that. Now, why is this concept really important of 
the six and the one flat three six because that lick ba bu da bu da those notes not only fit in the one chord they fit in the four chord in fact those are three chord three chord tones from that four chord <laughs> So by me using in the one chord, I could do the, I could use the same combination of notes during the four chord. And honestly, I could do this during the five chord too. It'll add some nice tension there. So if you wanted to do an exercise, an improvisation exercise, because we do practice improvisation, you could take the one flat three six in the order that you know is of the lick, or any order you want, and just use those notes and create a solo in the blues. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, now don't go. I've got one more tip I'm going to share with you. But first, let me know, does this make sense? Just type sense in the comments below. And while you're at it, give this video a like and tap the bell to subscribe so that you know when new videos come out each and every week. Now, if you liked this lesson, these are the types of lessons that I share on my Patreon channel, my Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash Donna Schwartz Music. I'll put the link in the description below. And if you want more blues tips, improvisation tips, performance tips, definitely go to DonnaSchwartzMusic.com where you'll get free videos, free video lessons, and special perks that only my subscribers get. All right, here's that last tip. If you had difficulty feeling where that lick was in the measure, which is so important, by the way, because you'll never internalize a lick until you know uh, where it fits in the measure, what the rhythms are. If you had difficulty with that, here's your homework. Listen to the radio. I would say listen to something simple like maybe rock music, blues, um, country music. I wouldn't pick jazz unless that's something that you listen to all the time and you're used to it. But pick something simple and I want you to find the big beat first. Find the big beat that you're bopping your head to. And then say to yourself, are the other beats, are the smaller beats, are they grouped in twos or threes? And do that for about a week. Okay, and then let me know in the comments below how much that rhythm exercise helped you. All right, thanks so much for joining me. I hope this lesson helped you. If it did, share it. That would be awesome. And subscribe to my channel. All right, on that note, take care. Have a great day.